everybody. My name is Darren Kerr from FK Partners, and I'd like to talk to you a little bit about some final tips for the CFA Level 1 exam. As the test is approaching, I think it's important for you all to get yourselves organized over these final weeks and use your time in the most effective way possible. So we put together a little presentation to talk about what you should be doing over these final weeks, and then as you get really close to the test, what you should be doing the days before, the day of, and what to expect on test day. So to get started, I want to talk a little bit about the testing policies that the CFA Institute has. Each student should go actually into the CFA website and read these policies to make sure that they're aware of each different point among those policies that the CFA Institute elaborates on their website for exam day. So for the calculator policy, I believe you know, and hopefully you've been practicing through the semester with an approved calculator. There's basically two types of models that you can be using and you're allowed to bring in and take uh, with you on the test. The Texas Instruments BA2 Plus and the HP 12C. So you can see there's a couple versions of the Texas Instruments one that you're allowed to use and there's a few versions of the HP 12C that you're allowed to use. Now with regards to the calculators, one other tip that I'd like to give you all. When I was taking these exams as a candidate, I would always bring with me two calculators. I was always worried that something might happen to the battery of the calculator that I was using, and just to be safe, I always had a backup. Now, I would encourage you to do that, and if you don't have a backup, I would at least encourage you all to have a backup battery. So make sure that you do, and also that you've checked the battery to make sure that it functions properly. And one more point, make sure that you know how to change your battery. So if you were to go into the, the actual back of the calculator that you know how to open it up uh, and are able to swap out the batteries in a relatively quick way so that it doesn't slow you down on test day if you ever needed to make that replacement of the batteries. So just be aware of the calculator policy that they have. Know that you're allowed to bring in an extra calculator and you're also allowed to bring in an extra battery or more if you feel it, it would be helpful for you all. Now, also part of these testing policies, the admission and departure policy. One of the things that you should have by now, as we're getting close to the exam, is an admissions ticket. If you log into the CFA Institute website as a candidate, under your candidate login, you should have available to you all your admissions ticket. That admissions ticket is going to show you where you're taking the test. So when you signed up to take the exam, you had to put in a test location. Check to make sure that your test location matches what you had chosen back when you signed up. Also, make sure you understand where the address is. And one more point, make sure that the name on your admission ticket matches the name on your passport. Very important. You're obviously not going to be able to change your passport. The identification that you're going to need to be uh, showing when you enter into the exam room. But you can ask the CFA Institute to change the name on your admission ticket if it doesn't match your passport. Be aware of that. And don't ask them Friday before the exam. Do that now, weeks before the exam, because I'm sure there's going to be other candidates that are asking them the days right before. So make sure that you're uh, aware that you have an admission ticket available now that we're a few weeks away. Make sure that you're checking to verify that you have the proper test location and your name is spelled correctly on that admissions ticket. Some other things that I will present for you all here in the admission and departure policy. You do have to bring the passport. That was required when you actually registered for the exam, so make sure you bring it. Uh, and the admission ticket. The admission ticket needs to be printed on a clean piece of paper. Make sure that you're not using some sort of scrap paper where there's some formulas uh, from your studies on the back of the paper. Make sure it's a clean piece of paper. Another thing that's important to understand here, uh, you want to get there early. Arrive at the test center around one hour before the start. The exams begin at 9 o'clock. You should get there at 8 o'clock. It's going to take a while for all of the people to get in, have their identification checked, their admissions ticket checked. There's going to be assigned seating in the ex actual exam room, so you're going to need some time to pass through all of the security to be able to get actually into the testing room and seated. Make sure you get there early. Now, notice here they have, it's interesting, if you arrive after the exam begins, you can actually still enter. Uh, but if you arrive more than 30 minutes after the start of the time portion of the exam, you're not going to be allowed to take the test. 
And we highly advise against this. Make sure that you get there early and you're not showing up uh, 10, 15, 20 minutes late. Although if you did, you could still enter up to 30 minutes late. Uh, once you're there and you're seated, you're gonna to need to remain in your seated area, in that designated area uh, during the exam. And then once you're released, once the exam, the time portion of the exam is over, then you can leave the testing area. Also, you are allowed to leave the room to go out to the bathroom or to get some water, uh, but you're not allowed to leave the secure area. Note, also, it would not be wise to have to keep getting up and leaving the testing room to get water or use the restroom. So hopefully you can do all of that before the start of the three-hour time sessions. So these are just some tips in terms of what to do uh, in terms of getting there early, mission policy, etc. Another thing that's worth noting, there's an answer sheet and an exam book policy. The CFA Institute takes very seriously exam security. They're gonna make you sign to make sure that you're not sharing any of the information from the exam. In fact, you're gonna to have to basically sign that you could be charged criminally if you actually steal the exam. It's their possession, it's their uh, exam, and the intellectual property, the content of the exam is theirs as well. So no sharing any of that, obviously. Um, they have a policy on pencils for those that are doing the multiple choice portion. So level one candidates and also level two candidates, it's all multiple choice. So level three afternoon, multiple choice. So you can use a number two or an HB pencil. What they basically want is to make sure the pencil is dark enough so that it can be read by the scanning equipment. You're gonna be filling in bubbles on an answer key and it needs to be clear. So make sure that you fill in completely the ovals so that it can be read by the scanning equipment. No messes, no stray marks. We wanna make sure that the answers that you're choosing are the ones that the scanning equipment can read. So this is something that we probably don't practice when we're doing our mock exams, but it's worth noting that it's gonna take you a little bit longer to be able to actually fill in those answer bubbles or ovals as you actually populate the answer key. So you wanna take that into consideration as part of your overall timing strategy for the three hour sessions. What I mean by that is when you're going through and practicing, you wanna note that instead of just circling A, you're gonna probably need to circ, you're gonna to need to actually on the real exam, fill in an oval and that's gonna take an extra few seconds. Multiply that ac across all the questions on the exam, that time does add up, it's not insignificant. The other thing that I would note with regards to filling out the answer key, I don't suggest waiting to the end to fill everything out. I would do it as you go. Now maybe you don't wanna do it every question, but at least every 10 questions or so, you should be transferring your answers over to the answer key. Also be very careful here that you're transferring the answers correctly. If, let's say you're working through the exam, you decide you wanna skip question number 10 and move on to question 11. Make sure that you're also skipping question number 10 over on the answer key and moving on to question 11 there as well. Uh, you want to make sure that you don't discover this type of mistake later on after you've gone through another 20 questions and then you have to erase and make a big mess and also it can cause uh, a lot of stress for you all. Uh, that's unnecessary. So be very careful getting those answers transferred over to the answer key. Uh, for the CFA Institute's identification policy, we already mentioned in addition to that admissions ticket, you obviously need to bring that passport. The passport was necessary to register. Some points here, make sure it is the same passport that you use to register for the exam and make sure that it's valid. Make sure that it has not yet expired. Very important that you're looking, they're gonna be looking for an identification document, that passport that is still valid and not yet expired. So important that you're aware of all of this. It's also gotta be the original. You can't bring a copy. So make sure it's probably not a, a type of document that you would normally walk around with. Make sure you have it set aside, ready to go along with your pencils, your calculators, your extra batteries, your admissions ticket, et cetera, uh, well before uh, you actually leave to go to the test on that Saturday. And I highly advise you all to go to the website, as I mentioned before, and read for yourself these exam policies. Very important that you're aware of what is going to be expected of you on test day. The proctors, those that are in charge of the exam security, have a list of rules that they have to make sure the candidates are following. If there are violations of those rules, they're gonna send reports to the CFA Institute about the candidates that violated, and you don't wanna be one of those. So make sure that you're well aware of these exam policies 
and you should spend a few weeks, uh, spend a few minutes reading these exam policies well in advance. And what I mean by that is at least a couple weeks before the exam. Don't save this until the night before. Now, let's talk about things that you need to bring with you. I mentioned the exam ticket and the passport and the calculators. Also make sure you bring your pencils. I used to bring several pencils because you're not allowed to ask your neighbor if your pencil becomes dull or it breaks or something and you're not able to use it anymore. Make sure you have some backups. You can bring erasers and, and whatnot, but I would make sure that you have several pencils so that as you work through the day, you're always with a fresh one that's sharp and able to fill in those ovals on the answer key in a way that's easy for those scanning equipment to read. Uh, now, some things that you can bring into the room uh, that you can also keep on your desk, or that you may keep on your desk. So you can bring in a pencil sharpener. So obviously you need pencils for the multiple choice part of the exam. You can also bring in a pencil sharpener. No knives, they say. They actually say this on the website, but no knives. Bring in a proper pencil sharpener if you need erasers as well. In case you make a mistake, of course, you'll need to erase, so you can bring those. I mentioned the extra batteries for the calculator or even an extra calculator. Uh, that is also something you surely can bring. Uh, the tool, the screwdriver tool that will allow you to open the back of the calculator to replace the batteries is also permitted. Um, calculator cases uh, that in which you would store the calculator, that's allowed. If you wear eyeglasses, you can bring those. Uh, if you want to bring earplugs, you can. It's going to be quiet there. You're not allowed to talk, but sometimes people get distracted even in a quiet room with the noise of somebody uh, writing uh, next to them or maybe even breathing heavily or tapping on the desk or tapping their leg or things like that. So if you feel like it would be helpful for you all to have that more total silence with the earplugs, you're allowed to bring those. And then the wristwatch. I think this is important that you bring. You want to make sure you have a watch so that you can track the time. Don't expect there to be a clock in the room. There may, there may not be, but you should be tracking the time as you move through those three hour sessions. That's all part of the strategy that you should employ so that you're ready to go uh, and have a, basically a game plan to move through uh, each portion of the test. Now, that being said, make sure that if your watch has an alarm, like most watches do, it doesn't go off during the exam. Make sure that it's turned off, it's silent during the test. You don't want to be that guy or lady that has his or her watch go off and creates that type of distraction. That's going to get you um, a report written about you and sent up to the CFA Institute, unfortunately. Also, no smart watches. Any sort of basically computer on your arm, not allowed. Uh, so it's got to be a more simple watch that's just there simply to help you track the time as you move through the sessions. Now, some other items that you're allowed to bring into the testing room, but they have to either stay in your pockets or under your chair. So your money or your wallet, you're allowed to bring that in with you. Uh, but that's something that you keep again in a pocket or under your, under your chair, under the desk there. If you need some medicine or some tissues, these types of personal items, you're allowed to bring those. Uh, any sort of gum or hard candy, even cough drops you can bring. Uh, we've mentioned how you can wear the eyeglasses. Well, if you have an eyeglasses case, that's also something that's allowed to come in. And keys, keys to your apartment or your house or your car are also allowed to be, come into the testing room with you. Now. What are you not allowed to bring into the testing room? Any sort of food or drink. I know sometimes candidates will ask, what about water? Well, they don't want you to bring that in either. In fact, they don't permit it. You can get up and go and have a water break outside of the testing room. But again, that's going to take time. And time is, of, you know, time is short for these exams. I know it goes fast. So make sure that you've had a drink of water or whatever you need before you actually start the three-hour sessions because no food or drink is allowed. Um, any sort of baggage like a backpack or a handbag, none of that's allowed in the testing room. There's a, a, a secure area outside of the actual testing room in which you can leave some personal belongings. Clearly, there's, not, uh, there's no uh, study materials or scratch paper or formulas or anything like that that's allowed in the testing room either. So all of that has to stay outside. If you want to review some formulas or take a quick look through some of your notes, during the lunch break, you can do that. Your information and all that stuff can stay outside in a secure area 
away from the actual testing room, uh, but also in a place where only the candidates have passed through, the candidates and those that are working with the CFA Institute uh, to proctor the exam. So it's not just in a, an area where the general public can access it. Uh, but you got to keep all of that study material, et cetera, outside of the testing room. Some other things that are not allowed in there, no highlighters or correction fluids. Remember, it's a multiple choice test. If you make a mistake, you have an eraser. Uh, you don't need a highlighter. You don't need correction fluid. Uh, those are items that are not allowed in. Uh, they write on the website, no weapons. Okay, so uh, hopefully that would be obvious, but no weapons allowed in the room. Uh, mobile phones, maybe more importantly, uh, you're not allowed to bring in phones or cameras, etc. Uh, a lot of us are basically tied or attached to our phones these days. Phones need to stay outside of the testing room. They can stay in that secure belongings area, personal belongings area outside, but they're not allowed actually in the room. Phones obviously uh, these days can store lots of information, so it should be obvious as to why they don't want phones inside of the testing room. Any type of desk clock or timer is also not allowed. They don't want the distraction of that, the noise that it could create. You can bring the watch and should bring a watch to track your time, but that's it. No, no actual desk clock that you can set on the, the table there uh, to track it that way. Now, in the weeks before the exam, what should you be doing? Well, remember, the exam is based on those learning outcome statements or those LOSs. It's based on, that, what I mean by that, the questions for the exam are written to ensure that you learned the learning outcome statements. So as you review, you should be looking at those learning outcome statements to make sure that you grasped from the readings what the CFA Institute wanted you to know uh, at that time. And when we're doing our practice now, we've got access to kaplan schwazer material, we've got access to the question bank and the questions that are in the back of the book, back of the chapter, but we also have access to CFA Institute material. Don't forget to take a look at that material. You've got the ebooks when you registered for the exam, and then they have a QBank, as well as mock exams available for you all as candidates. You should be using those resources in addition to the Kaplan Schwazer material. So make sure that you know of and are using all the resources that you have available to do your question review over these final weeks. Question review and mock exams. Do at least five practice exams as you go through those final weeks. Five at least. So thinking about the CFA, the, the, the students here at FK Partners, you have, if you have the essential or premium package from Kaplan Schwazer, you have four practice exams in the books. Volume one has two, volume two has another two. We also administer a mock exam for our students here at the office, or for those that are in the broadcast course, we administer an exam where we provide you access to it online. That one happens approximately two weeks before the actual test. That's another one, there you go. Five exams available to you all to practice from Kaplan Schwazer material. You also now have three exams for a level one guy, three exams that are available on the CFA Institute's website. So you can practice those as well. And that sums up to eight exams that you have available. So we say do at least five, but you can do up to eight. And eight would be better if you have time. So one a week over the last five, six weeks, maybe two a week, some weeks, that would be ideal. Hopefully you'll see the progress as you move through those practice exams. And by the end, you're passing with comfort as you go through those final practice exams. Make sure that you have a well-defined plan. When it was earlier in the semester, although hopefully you were studying a lot then, it might have been a little bit more relaxed. Not now. Now it's time to really focus in every minute, every day that you're studying needs to be well defined. You have to have a plan. You want to make sure that you're using the time that you have in the most effective way possible. Try to take some time off from work if possible. I used to take off the week before the actual exam. Uh, when I was doing the exams though, I used to live in New York at the time and I had uh, a lot of colleagues that were also taking the exam. So it was very common for us uh, to have some time off as we approached the actual exam day. I know it might not be as common in Brazil to be able to get that time off, but try. See if you can get that week off before, if not at least a couple of days before, so that you're able to relax, and not relax, so to speak, but at least not focus on anything unrelated to the exam. So you can have 100% focus on the test. And one more thing, it's worth noting again, do full length practice exams. Why do I say that? Because a lot of times people will break 
those practice exams into the two, three hour sessions, or even break them down uh, you know, into smaller blocks inside of the three hour sessions. And we recommend that you actually sit down and do a six hour test as if you're really doing the exam. Don't wait until two weeks before the actual test to come here and do one of these uh, at FK Partners when we actually administer it in the six hour session. Do it on your own a few times before you show up here two weeks before and continue to do that as you get closer to the actual test. Because in addition to the, you know, the, the content that's gonna be covered on the exam, you also need to endure through a full day of two three hour sessions of six hours of testing and that is not easy to do. You gotta stay focused for a long period of time to be ready to go here. Some other things, the day before, at least by the day before, maybe even sooner, you should know where the test center is. Know how you're gonna get there. Know how long it takes. If you're gonna drive there, where are you gonna park? If you're gonna take an Uber or a taxi, how long does it take? Now, when you run the simulation as to how long it's gonna take, make sure you're doing it on a Saturday morning. It might be different in terms of timing if you do it at a different time of day or, or a different day of the week. Uh, so these are the things that you should be getting out of the way. So you've got the admission ticket and the, uh, the passport and the extra calculator and the battery and the pencils and all. And you know how, the directions, you know how you're gonna to get to the test center and it's all set aside and it's ready to go well before the test. Also, there's not a lot of studying that you can do on the final day. The Friday before the exam is a day of light review and then by mid to late afternoon, relax. The key on the Friday before the exam is to get a lot of rest. You're not gonna learn a lot of material one day before the test. That you should have been doing over the months before the exam. So the final day, right before the test, it's important for you all to try to get out of your head when you get late into the afternoon, into the early evening, the material that you've been focused so heavily on over these final weeks so that you can try to relax and try to get a good night's sleep. The key to having success on this exam, besides obviously the preparation, is to be well rested and at your best comes test day. Get there early on exam day. We talked about getting there one hour early. It takes a long time to get all the candidates through the, uh, the checking of identification and actually assigned into their proper seats. So make sure you get there early. We're talking eight o'clock in the morning, one hour before. It's a long day, you gotta endure through it. But it's important for you all to, to do that. Get there early, get there in advance. Some other things, make sure uh, with regards to um, you know, all the things that we talked about, have them all set aside, ready to go. Don't forget, have your own little checklist. And then you know, I'll, I'll go through some of these in a little bit more detail. But what you wanna do is make sure when you get into uh, the questions that you focus on what they're specifically asking for. What do they want you to answer there? Because as you can probably gather from the practice that you've done, a lot of these questions provide you with more information than you actually need. You don't need some of this information. You need to focus on what they're specifically asking you for so that you can ultimately answer correctly uh, and do it in the most efficient way possible. Also, ones that are too obvious or too easy, maybe you misread something, so be careful of those. Start with something easy. One of the things that I used to do was I would jump ethics and I would go into the exam a little bit further and I would start with a different topic. For me, corporate finance and equity were a couple of the topics that I thought were easier in the level one curriculum and I would start there. That would allow me to do two things, build some confidence and also because those questions for me were a little bit easier, I was able to get through them in a little bit of a quicker way. So I was also accumulating some time. I was going through the questions in a faster pace than I would normally go through across the entire exam. So I was feeling confident that I was doing fairly well and I felt pretty good about where I was in, with regards to the clock, the time. So it helps to have that strategy and to practice that strategy uh, in the mock exams in the months before, the months and the weeks before. Don't leave anything blank. We're talking about a multiple choice test and there's only three possible answer choices. If you have no idea at all, you still have a one out of three chance. If you have some idea, maybe you can eliminate a choice and have a one out of two chance. Don't leave anything blank. Give yourself a few minutes at the end to fill through anything that you have skipped over uh, as you've moved your way through the initial part of the test. Be neat and organized. Again, 
They're gonna put your answer key into a scanning equipment machine. Make sure that the equipment's gonna be able to easily read the answer choices that you transmitted onto the paper. Uh, use the restroom before, you don't wanna to have to take breaks during the actual test unless it's absolutely necessary. Make sure that you have a healthy lunch so that you're energized for the afternoon session. Again, it's a long day. You wanna make sure that you're okay and ready to go uh, as you move into uh, part two or afternoon session at 2 p.m. on test day. Expect the unexpected. Uh, a few years ago, here in the Sampala uh, test center area, we had some students that told us a, an interesting story that occurred during exam day. The power went out. The power went out during the test and they had to pause the test and they had to come and collect everybody's tests and everybody just had to sit in the room and wait. And it took almost an hour for the power to come back on. We do a happy hour at 5 p.m. on test day at the venue. And we were sitting there at the restaurant waiting for our students to arrive and they didn't arrive. And 5.30 came, they still didn't arrive. Finally, by around six o'clock, they started to arrive. And then they told us the story. So expect the unexpected. Their tests were graded just like everybody else's tests that, uh, that day. For those that were taking the tests all around the world, these things happen. So expect the unexpected. Uh, be prepared for that and just stay calm. You did the hard work throughout the semester. Now it's the final push over these final weeks. Do as much as you can. Do it in the most effective way in terms of time management as you can. But when you get to the exam, hopefully, because you've done all that hard work, you can feel confident that you're going to be okay. Stay calm and show that you know the material, that your knowledge is there. So some things specifically about the level one exam, there's 240 total questions, 120 in the morning session, another 120 in the afternoon. It breaks out to a minute and a half per question. I think you've done that math already by now. They're organized by category. The categories are 10 topics, ethics, quant, economics, financial reporting, corporate finance, equity, fixed income derivatives, alternatives, portfolio management. So we've got our topics. We don't have to go in order, as I mentioned already. You can skip around and go through the topics that you find to be maybe easier or the ones that you, based on your strategy, want to do first. And the whole objective here, everyone, is not to go through and spend a minute and a half per question. The objective is to get through the exam in about two hours and 20 minutes, maybe two hours and 30 minutes. Give yourself 30 to 40 minutes at the end so that you can go through and answer questions or try to answer questions that you skipped the first time and to also be able to check your work. You've transformed all, transferred all those questions over to an answer key. Make sure that you did so correctly. You should be doing that as you go, but during those final minutes, you should be checking again. Uh, have a marking strategy so that it's clear if you're skipping a question that you, that you need to come back to it. Uh, breathe, refocus, go back to work if you get into a, a stressful moment. So make sure, again, that you have a clear plan for the exam. Make sure also that when you're getting into some of these questions that you read all the answer choices. When we're going through this stuff in practice, maybe we try to answer something without even looking at the answer choices. Don't do that on test day. Use the answer choices. The correct answer is in front of you. It's right there. Make sure that you understand what the answer choices are for each of the questions that you're working through. Watch out for long questions. As we've practiced again, we've seen that there are pieces of information that are irrelevant. They're not going to help you answer the question. We call them distractors. They're there to maybe have you waste time. You should be focused on what you need and not focused on what you don't need. So keep uh, uh, you know, keep it clear as to what they're actually asking and focus on that. Filter out that extra information. Stop and think if you actually need to do a calculation and does the answer actually make sense. Don't be so tied to the calculator that you feel like you need to calculate every little thing in the calculator. Sometimes you can do calculations without uses of the calculator. Also, if you're plugging numbers into the calculator in a stressful timed exam, maybe you make a mistake. So make sure that you stop, think about it, see if the answer actually makes sense. Very important. First impressions are often correct. So don't try to second guess yourself. You can go back if you feel like you made a mistake, but if you're a little bit unsure of one or the other, usually the first impression is the correct one. So stay with it if you're in that type of situation. Uh, and 
If you do want to make a change, make sure that you have a good reason why you're making that change. And then again, stay confident. For the level one exam, you have 240 total questions across the entire exam. You're going to miss some questions. It's normal. In fact, you can miss at least 72 questions. Why 72? If you get 72 questions incorrect, that means that you got 70% of the questions correct. And if you get 70% of the questions correct, you're going to be passing this exam and moving on to level two. So realize that you're going to get some questions incorrect. Stay confident, stay calm, and move on. Keep moving forward. For the tough questions, as I mentioned, you know, maybe you need to jump them. Move on. Don't spend or waste too much time. Remember the average time per question. It's an average time. Some questions you can do faster than that, and that'll allow you to spend more time on other questions. But if you start spending two, three minutes, you're wasting time. Jump it, move on. Maybe you can come back to that one. Remember, you can miss some questions and still pass this exam. Never leave a blank answer. I already said that. Very important, worth repeating. Uh, again, you can maybe eliminate some answer choices so that you're focused on one or the other, A or B, that type of thing. That could be helpful. Um, time man management is very key. During your practice exams, you should be developing your time management strategy. It's not just about learning the content. It's about showing that you know the content in the format in which the CFA Institute is going to test you. Know how to move through these three-hour sessions. And by knowing, you'll have had to have practiced it multiple times. So make sure that you book into your study plan in these final weeks enough practice exams so that you're ready to go and you can try some of these different testing strategies. Consider, as I mentioned, doing an easy part of the exam first. As I already told you, I would skip into corporate finance and equity. That's how I like to start. For you all, it might be something else. That's fine. Pick a topic, I suggest. Pick a topic that you think is easy for a couple reasons, as I've already mentioned. You can build confidence and you can accumulate time. You can usually go through sections that you think are easier in a faster pace. And that'll allow you to be a little bit of ahead, of ahead of pace through the first or even second section of the exam. Never panic. If you fall behind, panicking makes things worse. If you need to take that 30 second mental break, do it. Take a quick break, get yourself re-energized, refocused, and continue on. You've worked hard. Don't panic, okay? There's gonna be, again, questions that you don't know. It's fine, there's a lot of material on these exams. During the lunch break, regroup, stay positive, and watch out for people that complain. It's normal to have a lunch with your colleagues, talk about the exam, you're not supposed to talk about the exam, but in general terms, maybe, doing well, not doing well, hopefully that's not the case, but if you start listening to people complaining how hard it is, how they're doing, really bad, they're not gonna pass. That's not the type of guy that you wanna have lunch with. So you might wanna have a plan for lunch where you get out of there, go somewhere else. In fact, when the exams here in Sao Paulo are at the shoppings, a lot of times the Praça de Elementa Sound gets overwhelmed at the lunch hour because there are so many people coming out of the exams that need to go to the, the nearest restaurants. So maybe you have a different plan, another place where you can go to have your lunch and get away. Fresh air, a walk around, that can be really helpful to activate the blood and get the, uh, the brain working for the afternoon session. So with that, we'll pause here. I wanna wish you all the best of luck over these final weeks. If you have any questions for us at FK Partners, please feel free to reach out. We're here to try to help you. We'd love to see you get through this exam and continue on your journey to becoming a CFA charter holder. So good luck again over these final weeks. And for our students, we'll see you at the happy hour.